We are so spiritually blind, we are not seeing anything. We are hearing the word of God, but we don't want to take it in. We don't want to understand. We refuse. Well, the, well, the Bible said it very clearly. He who have an ear will hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So you help yourself. All right? God wants to heal. And if you don't believe his word, you will not get no healing. If you believe his word, you will be healed. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. It is good to be with you today on Shekinah. I pray that you had a great week in the Lord, and uh, everything is okay with you and your families. And um, we are going to join our hearts right now in agreement for, um, for this message. Uh, the Lord is taking us in a different uh, direction now. And um, why? I know that the Lord is coming soon, and I know that um, he's preparing the church for this great revival that is about to take place. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we praise you and we bless you. We praise you and we thank you, Lord, for the goodness of Almighty God. We are asking now in Jesus' mighty name, as we join our hearts in agreement, every person that's listening, dear God, to this message online, we pray that they will, mighty God, listen with open hearts. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, your God, and you reign supreme. And we know that everything that is going on in this world right now, in every country, dear God, every country, every, every state, every, every place is facing, mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name, a lot right now. And mighty God, you've seen the violence in our young people. You have seen, mighty God, the lifestyle of our young people. There are many, many, my, mighty God, that was in the church from mighty God in Jesus' name, where they grew up in the church and have turned mighty God in Jesus' mighty name. They have turned their backs on God and mighty God. They're living, mighty God, for the devil and they're living for the world. And let them know, their God, today that in the name of Jesus, it is time that mighty God, they get back to God. Their problem is when they reach a certain age, like 18, they think that they can do anything. They think think at the age of 18 they can turn their backs on God and live just like the devil. But God, we're thanking you that there is hope for our young people. We're thanking you that you will restore them. We're thanking you that there would be healing and deliverance for them. And mighty God, as this message go forth, uh, there are many, many, dear God, that are sick in their bodies. Uh, there are many that are bound with fear. Uh, there are many that is tortured and tormented. Uh, mighty God, day and night, because in Jesus' mighty name, uh, Father God, they have left the word of God, and they're getting their eyes uh, on the circumstances all around. Uh, but God, that is not what the word of God says. Uh, we are children of God, and we have to step up to that place whereby in Jesus' mighty name, we will know what is our inheritance in Christ. We will know what is rightfully ours. And we have to arise now and take back our health, take back our finances, take back everything that the devil is trying to steal from us. The devil surely is a liar. And my God, in the name of Jesus, we're believing you and trusting you by faith that God, people's faith level will come up there, God, in a, in a mighty fresh way today. We pray, God, in Jesus' mighty name. It is not your will for any one of us to be sick. It is not your will. It is your will 
Mighty God, for us to be whole. It is your will for us to be well. And my God, we know that in the name of Jesus, there is a revival that's coming. And this revival that is coming, dear God, people will be made whole. And in Jesus' mighty name, I just pray that you will bless me with the unction and the utterance today. I pray that the Holy Spirit, as I open my mouth, you will fill it. And I pray, God, that you will have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask, dear God, that you will open your children their spiritual eyes, their spiritual ears, their spiritual understanding. You will quicken this message to them. And mighty God, we say thank you for the word of God. I pray now, dear God, that you will bless me with your presence and your anointing, and this word will not return void. It will accomplish that which you purpose it for. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I know that if you pay keen attention to the word of God today, you can walk away totally healed by the power of God. And I know this is a time where the Lord is going to be moving in signs and wonders now because we are heading now to that one last great revival on the face of this earth. When you look around and you see what's going on, it is pointing to one thing. That's the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Though many do not believe that our Lord is coming soon, uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what you think or, or if you believe or you don't, that doesn't interfere with his coming. You know, uh, it's good though if you have an, an open mind or an open heart to what the Lord is saying and doing in these end times. So I am going to be reading uh, to you right now from the book of Exodus. And I want you to take this verse very seriously and make sure that you highlight the verse and make sure that you study it. Study this verse word by word and you will understand what is yours. The reason why I'm starting with Exodus is because you would understand that God is a God of healing and miracles. God is a God of deliverance from the very beginning of times. From the very beginning, from the book of Genesis to Revelation, the beginning to the end, he is the same God. He has not changed. We are the ones that change on God, but God is the same yesterday, today and forever. He never changes. Now I'm reading from Exodus chapter 15 and we will go to verse 26. Praise God. Exodus 15 verse 26. Now, if you were to read this whole st the whole chapter it's a beautiful story with the children of Israel and, and, you know, the murmuring and the carrying on in the wilderness. But um, listen what the Lord is saying. And said, If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statues. I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Now, there are, there are many, many, many things in this one verse to conform our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to conform what God Almighty, you know, have for his children, will conform who he is. He is God, and he will always be God. Now, the people, they are murmuring, of course, against Moses, well, you have brought us out from Egypt. You want us to die here. And 
you know, you're killing us out, and they're murmuring, all kinds of, you name it. You can read the whole chapter for yourself. And, you know, Moses is, is a man of, what should I say? The Bible describes Moses as a meek person. Very meek. Now, we know that they're murmuring and they're carrying on. And he said, and the Lord is saying to them, If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. One message. And if you will do that which is right in the sight of God. Nobody likes that. Nobody wants to hear that. That's a twofold message right there. And will give ear to his commandments. That's a threefold message right there. And keep all his statues. That's a fivefold message right there. God is saying, if you will do all these things, there is that condition, if. The word if is a condition here. Well, always. The word if always joins two sentences, like the word but. Right? In the book of Revelation, John writing to the seven churches, right? He has addressed all the, the Lord has addressed all the churches, but he always used the word, but. Yes, you have this. Yes, you're this and that. Good commendations. But he would end up saying, but I have somewhat against you. Now, in the book of Exodus, God is saying here, in this fivefold message, in one verse, you know, if you will do these five things, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals. Now, let me address this. The reason why you see there are so, so much, so, so many sicknesses and diseases all over this world. Now, the newest one is monkeypox. All right? The Lord is saying here that he will bring no more diseases and sickness, sicknesses if we will do these five things all in one verse. And the reason why all these things are happening is because people do not want anything to do with God. They call his name, God this and God that, and you know the usual thing. There is a mass shooting here or a mass shooting there or, or somebody of prominence died and, you know, you have to, you have to, you, you have to stand in silence for, for 30 seconds and you know the routine. I don't know what silence is going to do. I know what prayer can do. I don't know what silence is going to do. You say, well, Pastor Jean, you're very disrespectful. Say what you want. I'm a person that tells it like it is. I don't know what silence is going to do. Tell me what prayer can do. Standing in silence doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean one thing. Say what you want. Now you tell me. God is saying, once you can do these five things, he is the Lord God that will heal you. You say, well, Pastor Jean, why so many people that are Christians, they're, they're not healed? They're sick and they're not healed. And they live very, very clean lives, very, very pure. They serve God out of a pure heart. I will answer that. So was Job. 
When you get in the book of Job, you will see Job was a righteous man. And Job hated evil. But God allows Satan to deal with Job in such a way. In other words, God was saying to Satan, do what you want, don't touch his life. You, 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 you knock his body down with, you know, the, the monkey pox, because that's what it looks like. Knock his body down with all the bulls, strike him, but don't touch his life. And I'm going to tell you, Job was going through. And the reason why sincere Christians go through a lot, they live clean, they live pure, they love God, they're sold out, they're praying people. I'm going to tell you, they are tried and they are tested. But there's going to come a day, just like how God delivered Job, God will deliver those people who are suffering for righteousness sake. God will deliver them. The suffering is not going to be forever. People will see and know that they suffered because God had a plan. They were tried and tested and they will pass the test and God will bring them through and he'll raise them up. Now, I'm talking about suffering now. In your body, you know, Christians who are going through a lot. Many, many times Christians are going through so much because of sin. Right? Because of sin. You go through so much because you're living a life that does not please God. The people in the world that's living for the devil, they are faced with all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. Hospitals are filled when the day comes. Right now, right, we have nurses and doctors. They are so tired. They have to work double shift. There's so much problems all over. People don't want... You know, so many businesses are, are in, you know, are in turmoil. They can't hire. They don't have, you know, the funds to hire more people. There's shortage, shortages of workers all over the world, everywhere. People are going through so much. The economy is going down. It's not going to get better. The only people that will rise and shine above everything and the only people that will be mightily blessed is God's children. They will, they will have more than enough. And I'm not talking about God's children that's playing church because we have a lot of God's children who are professing Christians and they're playing. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about Christians who, who live a loosey-goosey life and they don't care about paying tithes. One of the things that you will, bless, you will be blessed for is your tithe. You got to pay tithes. I don't care which church you go, you got to pay your tithes. The Bible says it and that settles it. Right? Read Malachi chapter 3. And a message came forth on tithes the other day. Go through it. Don't think you're going to rob God and think that, you know, you are not, you, you are going to be blessed. No, God doesn't work like that. There's so many people that have problems with tithing. If this word talk about tithing, you have to respect the word for what it says. And many of you are so concerned with tithing, that your soul is going to hell and you don't care. Many of you, you find excuses to serve God. All kinds of excuses. People don't want to come to church. They have this to deal with and that to deal with. I'm going to tell you, you'll deal with stuff until you die. And it's not going to change anything. Only God can help you. If you put your faith and trust in God, only God can help you with what is coming on the face of this earth. 
you think 2022 was tough? Wait, and you'll see 2023. As for 2024, you have some things that's going to take place in 24. Those, only those who are strong will stand. A lot is happening, and quickly. You look at the storm the other day, all right? Well, there's, they're saying it's not a storm, it's a tornado, whatever. Tornado or whatever is it, in that short space of time, people died, people got hurt, uh, you know, thousands of people don't have power. We haven't seen anything yet. That is just a tip of the iceberg. You say, Pastor Jean, you always come with gloom and doom. Say what you want. I am a prophetess, and that's how it's going to be. I'm coming with the word of the Lord. I don't make up any stories. I know my life, and I'm coming with the word of the Lord, not my own. I, I think, I don't know if it's a couple of years ago I was saying, Right online, God gave the word for America and United Kingdom and Canada. The word he gave for America was, America is a graveyard. And if you don't want to agree with that, then you are foolish. That's all they do. Killing every single day. I mean, all over they're killing. Not only America, all over. America is a graveyard. United Kingdom is paralyzed. And Canada is very sick. Praise God. Can you imagine? We have seen so many things happening. God gave the word, and we're seeing it every day coming to pass. Look at the state of our youths. 18 years, 17 years, 16 years, 14 years. They're killing every single day. And you sit back, you know, with your careless self and saying to yourself, oh, you know, Jesus is not coming soon. What more do you want to see? Are you blind? We are so spiritually blind, we are not seeing anything. We are hearing the word of God, but we don't want to take it in. We don't want to understand. We refuse. Well, the, well, the Bible said it very clearly. He who have an ear will hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So you help yourself. All right? God wants to heal. And if you don't believe his word, you will not get no healing. If you believe his word, you will be healed. We're going to go now to Matthew 17. And we will hear the requirements for healing. Matthew 17, verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. That's what I was saying just now. You have to believe. People don't believe a lot of things when it comes to God. You don't, you don't fool around with a God that is sovereign. You don't fool around with the blood of Jesus. The blood that Jesus shed on Calvary is not cheap. The blood is not cheap. All the millions of gods that people believe in, all the millions of gods, which one gave their life on a cross. Which one? None. 
are the millions that, you know, that people believe, the millions of gods, all the religions, or, or, you know, in the world, like I said in the last message, according to the book of Revelation, all the religions are called one, two words, three words, the great whore. All the religions. And what I'm trying to say here today, you're serving a God that can't hear you. You're serving a God that can't walk and see and hear and talk. And you're serving that God faithfully. All right? The other day I went to a place and I saw in front of the Buddha, Buddha God, they have strong drink. I don't know if it's rum or wine. I couldn't tell because it was difficult to read. They have a bunch of garlic and, and all kinds of fruits. They have a bunch of incense that they're burning in front of this God. You're going to feed your God, you know, strong drink? He, he wants, your God must be drunk? You're going to feed your God fruits? Your, your God hungry? You got to burn incense before God? When God is saying to his people, all your prayers must go up like a sweet-smelling savor. And you're burning, you know, our prayers must go up like incense, like a sweet-smelling savor. You're burning incense before your God? You're praying to stone gods that can't hear you? In these civilized days, why don't you sit back and ask yourself, you know, Take inventory of your lives and ask yourself some questions. The atheists have problems. They don't believe. Let me tell you, God's signature is in creation. God's signature is in creation. The other day, a, few, a couple of days ago, a few days ago, I was driving along, you know, one street. And I'm looking at all the trees and, you know, these things were dry. They were dry, 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 dry just dry sticks standing there. And I was saying to who was with me in the car, I, don't know my, I think it was my son or my daughter, and I was saying to them, look, these, look at these sticks how they have, you know, healthy leaves and they're thriving now. It's, it's, you know, it's spring. And look how lovely they look. And, 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 and you know, summer is coming and they will look even nicer and all the beautiful flowers. You're going to tell me that there's not a God? Those things try stand there with, like dry sticks during all winter and have a look at them now. And you're going to say there's not a God? Who keeps them? Who keeps those things? He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. He is your healer if you want him. He is your savior and lord if you want him. He is our soon coming king. If you're looking for him, if you're not looking for him, he's not coming for you. You're dabbling with your witchcraft and all kinds of stuff. You believe in all kinds of junk. Why don't you believe in the blood of Jesus that is able to save you? That is able to protect you. You don't need nothing but the blood. Anything you add with the blood and you say you're, you're, you're serving God and you're, you're speaking in heavy tongues, you're a hypocrite. Nothing will happen for you because God doesn't need your help. You have to look to Jesus alone who is the author and finisher of your faith. 
You can't add anything to the blood. You, got, you go and you, 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 you clean your house with all kinds of nastiness and burn incense. And you're inviting demons. And you don't know it. You have salt all over the globe. What you want with salt? Salt is to cook with. Apply the blood. It's the blood of Jesus that can wash you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness and all sins. What can wash away your sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus, the songwriter says. So listen what it says. Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. You have to believe God. You have to trust God. You have to take God at his word if you want his help. Praise God. Now, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. God is not asking you to have mountain faith. Faith like a mountain. He said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will be able to speak to the mountain, and it has to go in Jesus' mighty name. So, if you're putting your faith and trust in anything else but Jesus Christ and his blood that he shed, you are on your way to hell. That is blunt, but it's the truth. Unless, unless you come to that place in your life where you can see the cross as the, as the object of your faith. The cross is the object of your faith, not them stone stuff, not salt and, and, and put clove and, and you're putting clove in your hair and, and believe in all kinds of stuff. Anything you add to the blood, you are not saved, I'm sorry. You are lost. Why is it we cannot understand the finished work of Jesus? You can't place your faith and trust in somebody. All the different gods you're believing in, right? Some of them dead, dead like dead. Some of them alive on this earth and have family. And living in sin more than me and you. And you call them a god. And you worship them. You think God is pleased with that? You're leaving the true God and what Jesus did on the cross for you. And you're serving stuff that cannot help you. Where is your brains? You don't need to go to university to study, you know, religion. The cross is it. Put your faith. The cross is the object of your faith. Put your faith and trust in what Jesus did on the cross. That will help you. Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for value I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of must, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, then you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Nothing will be impossible to you. God will answer your prayers according to his will. Is it God's will to heal you? Yes. It's God's will to heal every one of us. And you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, try to figure that one out or do any calculation about that. No, no, no. Or do research. That's what he came for, to heal, to save, to deliver, to set free. To give you peace, to give you joy, to give you grace, to give you strength. That's what he came for. But no, you're seeking things from this world, on this earth, 
and earthly things are temporal. Earthly things are temporal. So we know that if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, God said he's able. All it takes is mustard seed faith. Do you know mustard seed is the smallest faith? Is the smallest seed? It's a tiny little seed. If I try to put one in my hands, if it falls down, I can't find it. It's so tiny. Christians wavering, doubting, full of fear and unbelief and doubt. Non-Christians are out there seeking this and seeking that when Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. There is nothing else. And if you don't put your faith and trust in Jesus, again, you're on your way to hell. Unless you repent, of course. Okay, we're going we're gonna to go now to a story. And I would like you to turn kindly, please, to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. And we will go from verse 1 to 12. Mark chapter 2, 1 to 12. And again, he entered into Capernaum, that's Jesus, after some days. And it was noised that he was in the house. So Jesus went to Capernaum, and of course, word went forth, word went out. You know, it's just like today. You, you can't keep anything. You just something goes, you know, something... Whatever is going on, you know, it's all over the place. You know, you can't keep nothing. So it went about saying, well, Jesus is in town. And in case you're wondering whose house he was in, possibly it could be Peter. Peter. And straightway means immediately, many were gathered together, of course. People heard he's in town and they start to flock. They start to flock the house, right? And straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much. Even at the door, every way in this home was filled with people. And he preached the word to them. Preachers. Parents. What are you preaching to your children? What are you saying to them? Are you giving them the word? Or what you're giving to them? Except they hear the word. They can't change. This word is powerful. The Bible says the word is quick. And powerful and sharper than any two-edged two sword. Preachers, what are you giving to your flock? You're giving them half gospel? Or you're giving them the whole truth? You give them half gospel, you will stand before God one day. And all those people's blood will be on you. Parents, what are you giving your children? Yeah, you're giving them gifts. They want house, you buy house. They want car, you buy car. You want holiday, you give them. Why don't you start giving them the word? It's the word. When, I was, when my kids were growing up, it was always the word. That is how I brought them up. It was always the word. 
Praise God. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. All right, what it means here, four people was carrying this paralyzed man on a cot. All right, you know that little cot that they can lift up. So four people was holding the four corners of this cot, carrying a paralyzed man. When they could not come near unto him for the press, in other words, the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. These people came with this paralyzed man, these four, these four people who are carrying this paralyzed man. Maybe they were four friends or maybe they were relatives or whatever. And because of the crowd, they could not get in. Now, I want you to see something here. And I pray that God open your spiritual eyes to see it. They couldn't get in. So what they did now, they're going to put this man on the roof. The homes in those days, you know, people who were, what should I say, um, you have, you know, average. You have the very rich and you have the middle class and you have a ones that very poor. Well, let's say that this was, you know, middle, middle somewhere there. So the houses in Israel, you know, for in those days, they were kind of low, like they weren't like high for this middle class crowd, right? So it was very easy for them to get on the roof. And may I say, many times they sleep even on the roof because the place was, you know, they can't afford the, the gadgets, you know, like AC and whatever, whatever. So many times they was even sleep on the roof in the summer because it's nice and cool. So because of the crowd, they decided that they're going to take this man, you know, the four, the four that was carrying him, they're going to take him right now on the roof. Many times, you Christians, you hear me. Many, many times you can get answers from God, one, two, three. Many, many times you go on in doubt and unbelief. You go on in your sin and you put band-aid over your sin because you think that God can't keep you. You think that God is powerless to keep you. He, he doesn't have the power to give you a sound mind. He doesn't have the power to keep you, to keep you pure and clean. Nobody in this whole wide world can force you to commit a sin or sins if you don't want to. Nobody can force you. No devil can confuse your brains whereby your thoughts are impure, unclean, wicked, and evil. No devil can put no stinking thoughts in your brains because what you feed, that is what will grow. If you feed your mind and your heart pornography, it will grow. If you feed yourself fornication and adultery, that will grow. If you're a liar, it will grow. Whatever you feed, it will grow. You rob God. You don't want to pay your tithes. Oh, God doesn't need my money. 
Why are you so foolish? Why don't you get in the word and study the word? You're going to take everything else and lose out for tithe? So stupid. It's in giving you're blessed. And people have these big issues with tithe. Can you imagine? You're robbing God and you want God to bless you? Yes, yeah, sit there. You have your brain and all you're doing, you know. You need your brain to be filtered by the Holy Ghost. You accumulate thoughts in that brain. Yeah, well, well you know, God, you know, um, it starts and, you know, it's there. My phone is there and everything is in my face. Yeah, I don't care what's in your face. You don't have to listen to the devil. You know why you listen to him? Because your brain, your mind nasty. You can't limit God. There is no limit with God, none. I am not going to stand for the ignorance and the foolishness that's saying that God can't keep you. No, no, no. He could keep you. You present yourself like to Satan. You open yourself to the devil. You lay down with dog. You're going to get up at fleas. That's it. And you want God to bless you and you want to, to do your own thing and live your own life? Ain't going to work. You got to do it God's way and the Bible way. That's how the blessings come. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, your sins be forgiven. Now I'm not finished with verse 4 yet. Back to verse 4. They broke up the roof and they let down the bed where the sick of the palsy laid. You have some roof, right? You have some roofs in your life. You need to tear them down. The devil is a liar. Tear down all the roofs that is keeping you from your blessing. Them spiritual roof that you have made over yourself. They need, you need to take them apart. You need to rip them out and live under an open heaven of blessings from the Lord. If I'm going to serve God and live for God halfway, I want nothing to do with him. It's all of God or nothing. All of this word or nothing. Genesis to Revelation or nothing. I do not want half truth. Half truth will send you to hell. Oh, I was born this way. And I have to die this way. No, you give me the whole truth. And nothing but the truth. All them flimsy doctrine. You got some churches, they have their congregation, you know, they have tunic necks and close to their ankle, no lipstick. They can't go to the hairdresser. Foolish! That's foolish. No jewelry, no this, no that. But their heart rotten, like a rotten apple. Their heart in a mess outside, you know, they make, look, they make it look, yeah, you're very pious and holy. And how they come in church, they have to leave. People are sick, they come in church, they need a miracle, they have to leave the same way they came. 
because they're not taught that miracles and healing belongs to them. The devil is a liar. Get them roof that you have built for yourself. Tear them apart. Don't let nothing keep you from living under an open heaven. Enjoying the blessings of the Lord. All them cliches and all them silly doctrine. Get rid of them. Just believe on Jesus and the word. I have no time to waste with people that are foolish. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, your sins are forgiven. I would like you to see here how important this is for you to hear and understand and know. This man needed a miracle. They have exercised their faith in such a powerful way that they tore the roof down because of the crowd, let him down. And Jesus saw he was a sinful man. And because of his sin, that sin crippled him. Sin is crippling your faith. You may not be crippled physically, but sin is crippling your faith in God. Sin. And Jesus has addressed the sin problem because he knows that's important. This verse here can take us back to where we just went. In Exodus 15, 26. If you will get those five things done, there's less God can do with you. In this verse, Jesus addressed the sin problem first. So his sins were forgiven. Now we're going to receive his healing. But listen, when you sold out for God, you will have a lot of heat to face. You see me? I could not care less what people think about me or say about me. I know one thing. One thing I know. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe the Holy Spirit. I believe God Almighty. I believe in the Trinity. And I believe that they are one. And I believe what Jesus did on the cross. And what I believe, I preach. What the Word of God says, I preach. And I am not going to change. I believe in healing. I believe in miracles. I believe, I believe, I believe. I've seen too much not to believe. But Jesus is going to face a lot of heat. But he knows he and his father is one. And he didn't care. Watch this. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man thus speak blasphemy? All because Jesus said to this man, your sins are forgiven. They are going to ridicule him now and say that, oh, he's a he is a blasphemer. And one thing I like about Jesus, you know, he never cared. He just go about and do what he has to do. And don't even look at them. Who can forgive sins but God? They're ridiculing him. Who can forgive sins but God? Hello. He is God. He is, when he was on this earth, very God and very man. He is the son of the living God. 
And because he and his father, they are one, he can do what his father do. You can do what Jesus do. Jesus said it. Greater works will we do. But no. You, you serve. You, the, I'm talking to Christians, you know, and, and, and the people out there who couldn't care less about God. You serve your little mini God and you make Jesus this little mini object. Listen. He's not a mini. He's great. He's majestic. He's sovereign. He is mighty. Don't bring him to your level. Excuse me, please. He is the great I am. And immediately when Jesus perceived in, this, in his spirit that they saw reason with themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? In other words, he's saying to the scribes here and Pharisees and whoever there was there, he's saying to them, why, why do you reason? Why do you have questions about me in your hearts? Why don't you believe? He fixed them. Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, verse 9, your sins be forgiven you, or to say, arise and take up your bed and walk? Jesus is saying to them, which one is easier? To tell this man, take up his cot and walk, or to say your sins are forgiven? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power and order to forgive sins, he said to the sick of the palsy. I say unto you, arise, take up your bed, and go your way into your house. Jesus is saying, I have power to forgive sins, and I have power to heal. You said, does God heal today? Yes. We are not the healers. Preachers are not the healers. You know, and the saints of God are not the healers. They are just vehicles. They are just vessels that as they submit themselves to God, as they serve God in the beauty of holiness, the Lord will place his spirit in and, and, in and upon them and use them in miracles and signs and wonders. We are not the healers. God is. Jesus is the healer. So he said to them, he said to the man that is sick, that is paralyzed, your sins are forgiven, take up your bed and walk. That, get, that got them more, more crazy, this, the Pharisee, the scribes. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all. All the skeptics. Skeptics that were there, they saw with their eyes what Jesus did. And immediately arose, took up the bed, and went before, and went forth before them all. And, and as much, in so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. We never saw, in other words, anything like this. Never. You are about to see some things that you have never seen in all the revivals that took place. Azusa Street, great men of God like Smith Wigglesworth and, you know, T.L. Osborne and many, many, many more. All the great revivals. There is one that is about to come forth. You will never, ever see anything like it on this earth. This God is God. And he will do his work. My 
mightily on this earth through men and women and boys and girls that make themselves available to him, living the life, walking the life, talking the talk, believing on him, trusting in him, living with a pure heart. Those are the people God will use. And you're going to see God going to raise up some children. These little kids. I had a dream the other night about one. They're going to lay hands and they, they, they're going to use these little, little ones. And he's going to put his power in them and they will be used mightily by God. These little ones. Remember what David says in the book of Psalms? A little child shall lead them. Remember what David says, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. So can God heal today? Yes. God can heal you today. So what we're going to do now, we're going to pray. And I want you to take your hand, and whatever you're listening, whether your television or your, your phone, whatever, just place your hands on it so that we can come in agreement. It's just a point of contact. And we're going to pray. But before we start to pray, there are a few people that's listening. You have real bad allergies. God going to heal you now. There are people that's listening right? You have cancer. God going to heal you. You have people that is bound by fear and doubt and unbelief. God can lose you. All right? You have people. There's, there's somebody that's listening to me right now. You have a very bad sensation. And you don't know why you're feeling this way. God going to heal you. Do not mope around with no sickness. All right? God can heal you. There's somebody who have a heart condition. God can heal you. There's somebody, you know, you have been knocked down with the COVID, and that's many all over the place, all over the world. And you, you can't get over the after effects from it. All kinds of weird feelings. We're going to pray now. Wherever you're sick, put your hand, whatever is it. And I want to hear the report, okay? Now, believe and trust God. Repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. We're addressing the sin problem now. Forgive me of all my sins. I invite Jesus into my heart as my Lord and Savior. And Lord, I thank you. And now, God, I need that miracle. Now that you have forgiven me of my sins, Mighty God, I'm extending my hand on my device. And in Jesus' name, we're coming in agreement. Ready? Let's go. Father God, in the name of Jesus, uh, on the authority of God's holy word, uh, I prophesy uh, to every dry dead bone uh, in your people's body, uh, in that man, uh, in that woman, uh, in that boy, uh, and in that girl that is listening, uh, I prophesy to every dry dead bone to come alive. Uh, you lying devil, uh, you lose God's children right now. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, I curse the spirit of cancer from the root. Come out, you devil, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I curse the spirit uh, of allergies right now. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I uh, curse it from the root. Uh, Lord, heal your people and deliver them. Uh, that one there, God, uh, that has that weird sensation, uh, I pray, God, that you will touch that one uh, and heal them. Uh, every sickness, every ache, every pain, uh, all those who had the COVID uh, and suffering the after effects, uh, my God, heal their bodies. Uh, let the healing power of God uh, flow through their bodies right now uh, and make them whole uh, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Uh, we tear the roof down on your people's lives. We tear down the roof and we believe by faith and join with your people and as we come in agreement, my God, we declare and decree total wholeness, 
for your children, body, spirit, soul, and mind. Heal, heal, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise God. I would like to entitle this message, Jesus is your healer. Jesus is your healer. God bless you.